I'm really excited to talk about Foodscape design, but first let's talk about why it matters. For me, Foodscaping is about providing front door access to the best tasting, most nutritious food and the most beautiful surroundings. For me, it's about, um, it's about reconnecting with what it means to be a good steward of the land and to be part of a healthy ecosystem. And at the same time, trying to build a, a better world for future generations by starting right in our community. So the rest of this video is, is a, a sort of a mini class um, with foodscape design ideas and a list of our some of our favorite uh, edible ornamentals. Uh, but we're really just going to be able to scratch the surface. So we're going to try to move really quick uh, to, to keep the video short. Um, and the idea is that it, it's just enough to get the, the creative juices flowing. And from there, you know, think of your landscape as a blank canvas. Foodscaping is your opportunity to create your own art and to grow your own food at the same time. My perception of edible landscaping uh, and most modern approaches of foodscaping is that it's the basic idea that why can't you grow food and have it look amazing at the same time? And it's the idea that you can take an ornamental and, and mix it in right with your traditional landscape design. Um, there's no reason you can't put uh, beautiful pepper plants and eggplants right in with your flower bed. Or you can replace a, an ornamental uh, tree, flowering tree, let's say, uh, with a a fruit tree and it'll be absolutely just as beautiful. My vision for foodscaping is a little bit more radical in the idea that that it's as opposed to thinking about um, working edibles into a traditional landscape. My vision for foodscaping is that you start with the food. You think about what you want to grow and what's beautiful that also produces food. Uh, and then you design the, the foodscape around that. So we put the food front and center in our landscape design. So some examples of that uh, would be like a, like a squash arbor. Um, this is an arbor that we grew pumpkins over last year, for example. Um, this is in September and, and it creates a feature right in the middle of your foodscape and then you can design from around that. Um, here's a great barber, also gorgeous, of course. One of my favorite examples is the spalier fruit trees. They're incredibly ornamental and it's a super healthy way to grow, grow fruit. Um, and obviously fr the fruit on the fruit trees is delicious. But um, if you have a, a fenced off area or if you want to create a barrier, um, why not grow fruit on it? Foodscaping for me is also about growing a ton of food. Um, as opposed to thinking of it as we're, we're going to get a little a few peppers out of our flower bed um, we're talking about um, uh, replacing the entire traditional landscape and growing a lot of food at the same time last year um, in 2020 we grew 1229 pounds of food and it was obviously way more than we could eat um, but we donated a whole bunch of it gave a bunch to our neighbors um, and and we supplied 90 percent uh, or more of our own fruits and vegetables for the entire year. Um, foodscaping of course uh, is also about beauty. I think sometimes people uh, think that by growing food you have to some somehow sacrifice aesthetics um, but it, it, that's absolutely not true and I think you, you can have the most beautiful stunning landscape and still produce a, a ton of food. Um, within Foodscape Design, we also work in uh, a lot of flowers, not only for beauty, but because they complement the food be uh, bearing crops as, as uh, companions. They attract beneficial insects like the um, native bee on, on these echinacea flowers. 
All right, here's our quick list of edible ornamentals. Um, we mentioned the fruit trees and grapes. Um, obviously, they can be really pretty. Artichoke is one of our favorites. Um, the, the, they're just a, a very interesting looking plant. Um, they've got really unique uh, textures. You can, you can have them as a feature in a landscape design. So the part of the artichoke that you actually eat is what's a, a developing flower. And if you let those bloom, they're absolutely gorgeous. It's this it's violet, bright violet color. Amaranth is another one of our favorites. This is Love Life's uh, Bleeding Amaranth. Honeyberry is a good example of, of a, a attractive shrub that you could use. Uh, if your uh, climate tolerates, you could go with blueberries. Uh, here in, in Utah with our alkaline soil, honeyberry is an option um, and it's got a similar uh, flavor to blueberry. We really like it. Um, and then I mentioned eggplants and peppers. They're some of our favorite um, uh, design features and we always have a lot of flowers with them. Garlic is one of my favorite examples of uh, uh, foodscaping um, and this is a, uh, an idea that, I, that we borrow from uh, Brie Arthur who's well known for foodscaping. Um, one of the, the things that she says is um, no, over 90% of garlic is grown in grocery stores in the United States is grown in China um, and it's one of those things that's super easy to grow and it looks super cool at the same time and if you're if you're thinking about planting bulbs like daffodils make a make a cluster of garlic uh, either mix it in with the daffodils and tulips or have it separate um, they're really attractive too um, some other things that you can do for design ideas um, rainbow chard is one of our favorites super ornamental um, if you're going to grow leafy greens, uh, look for a variety of colors and, and, and textures. Here we just created a pattern of different colored and textured lettuces um, and it looks, it looks really nice. Um, last year was the first time that we grew collard greens and we really love them. Um, they, they produce a, a pretty large uh, uh, plant but it's got a really uh, unique nice looking leaf texture so you, it goes along with that idea that you can mix textures and mix flowers in. Kale is the same way. So to summarize our foodscape design ideas um, for my vision of foodscaping we put the food bearing plants front and center. So think about those espalier fruit trees and, and vegetables climbing over uh, arbors and, and trellises and, and grapes. Um, and then another thing to consider is, is try to add in some, some negative space. And if you aren't familiar with that term, that's just the idea that you have, you have an open space. We like to use like an open center type design um, as part of the foodscape. Um, as you can see in this picture, we've got, um, uh, flagstone patio area and then we put some thyme, creeping thyme in the cracks and it, it, it looks really nice. Um, also mix in a plethora of beautiful flowers. They add beauty but they also complement the foodscape by attracting beneficial insects uh, and which can really help in pest management. Uh, we like to view our foodscape as an ecosystem of abundant life and beauty that, that also produces a ton of food. So now let's let's quickly go over some of the benefits of foodscaping. Um, if you've grown food, you probably already know this, but um, obviously the flavor of homegrown food is so much better than what you can find at the grocery store. It's also more more nutritious. Uh, grocery store food is picked too early, stored too long, and shipped too far. Um, and if you harvest it at the peak of ripeness, you get better flavor and um, better nutrition. For me, foodscaping is also a huge stress relief. Um, it's where I go out, it's how I get my exercise, and it's how I feel better. <laughs> I always feel better when I'm out working in the foodscape. Um, and as far as sustainability, you know, it, it doesn't get more local than your front yard. So if you can replace um, some of that food that had to be shipped across the country with uh, food that you grow at your home, that's gonna have a big impact, especially if you're concerned about food miles. Um, and foodscapes can also use a ton less water. If you're replacing grass with foodscaped areas, you can not only um, reduce some of the water that you, that, that you would use in your own landscape, especially if you're using drip irrigation, um, but you can also think about how much water you're saving by not buying um, uh, fruits and vegetables that were produced co commercially. 
Um, and finally, one of the biggest benefits for us of foodscaping is that it's, that it's given us an opportunity to volunteer in our community and build relationships. I think one of the best things about volunteer foodscaping is that it, that it can bring together beginning gardeners uh, with master gardeners uh, and they can, they can share in the experience and learn from each other. Um, and it, it's an incredible learning experience for everyone there. Thanks for watching Foodscaping Utah and grow your own.